everybody, and welcome to another edition of Huff Photo Presents Beyond the Lens podcast. This is a bonus episode. My name is Brian Huff, and today I was joined by Sonia and Ashante at the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee. Uh, this podcast was recorded uh, on location there, so I was trying out some new equipment. Uh, The sound may be a little bit different, and it's not perfected yet, but uh, I'm working on it. So bear with me as I get that all sorted out and uh, enjoy today's podcast. Today's uh, all about the Haywood Con that is coming in March the 9th and the uh, March the 8th and 9th. And uh, also, um, the Friday before the con, they're actually having a movie movie. that they're going to show. It's a fan movie made by Josh uh, Mason. Uh, this could be a fantastic chance to see that. It's Mario back in the game. Uh, I've seen the film. It's really, really fun. So uh, I think everybody's going to enjoy that. And that Friday, they're also given uh, a chance for all the vendors and stuff to set up there at Haywood Con. So hope we can see you guys out there for this one. This is going to be a, a really great time. So Mark your calendars for March the 8th and the 9th. And uh, here's today's podcast. Well, good morning, ladies. How are y'all doing today? We are well. Good morning. Morning. I heard you ran off. You you were you were going to go party in Nashville and not hang out with us. I, I, yeah, I didn't party long enough. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> didn't party long enough. Oh man. She ignored my text as long as she could. When she had to answer. Oh man. Well, I am super excited for this year's event. Now, you ladies started the Haywood Comic Con in what? Twenty twenty two was your start. Twenty twenty three was our first. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, how did this come about? How did y'all think of this? Well, you know, we, it's really weird. I guess we visited the Comic-Con down in Covington, Tennessee. Okay. okay. And we kind of looked at at each other and said, we could do this. And then we thought later, days later, are you serious? Did we really take this on? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We were inspired by the con there in Covington. It gets out of control pretty quickly. Quickly. (laughs) It also opened up a whole new world for us that we didn't realize existed. Right. You know, I guess in the scheme of the Comic-Con world, we're kind of, um, we're newbies. We're newbies. We're newbies. We're newbies. It's um, probably something because of our age mm-hmm. that has fallen under the radar for us. Sure. So, sure. It was something for me personally. I, I completely get that because I didn't really understand uh, that we even had them in this area. And I think mm-hmm. what the first ones I saw was like in 2017, personally, it was up in Nashville. And I thought, oh, this is awesome, but it's only something that would obviously come to these big cities. Right. You know. Right. Who would have thought Comic Cons in the rural area, especially yeah. rural West Tennessee? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that that was my first exposure to it. But then of actually doing them, my first one was like Tupelo. And uh, and then finding out, you know, one came to Corinth and then finding you guys. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's this whole almost I want to say underground network of of local conventions that um, I feel like people really need to know exist. Right. Because it's so much fun and uh, a community has developed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's that's something I think is really exciting. And you guys uh, have got. What y'all's first one was on a Friday, Saturday. This one will be Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, right? Sunday, yeah. Okay. March eighth and ninth and tenth will be around, huh? Right. On March eighth, we're actually going to allow the vendors to start okay. moving in, and we're going to kick things off actually on the evening of the eighth with music and a movie. Oh wow! Okay, that's awesome. So, uh, oh, I didn't even know that. See, we've got the schedule here. So that's going to be the movie that Josh Mason did. Right. Okay. Mason Studios. Yeah. Um, Super Mario Brothers I, back in the game. I watched that one on uh, when they did the preview of it mm-hmm. uh, on YouTube. We were hoping we could have done that premiere, last year, right? but he didn't quite have it finished yet. Oh, man. 
that was it was pretty neat. It's really neat to see uh, the things like this in the fan because this is another thing I've been exposed to was is the fan film world mm-hmm. uh, and the independent film world. Uh, and uh, like I met Santiago Cirillo at Haywood Con mm-hmm, last year, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people don't realize too that for people in not just the people coming out have fun, but people like me that are curious about the industry. These are great networking events. Yes. And that's another thing I don't think people really grasp that, that or even folks like you guys that are in this, like, Hey, you go to these conventions, you meet all these people and suddenly you realize here's another layer of all these people networking and moving around that are parts of movies and TV shows and everything else, you know? Um, yeah, and, and the other thing we realized was how many people we knew that knew about these things and were a part of uh, going to the conventions and stuff that we would have never imagined. Right, yeah. That was another thing for me, too, is just all the personal mm-hmm. uh, people. I'm like, oh, you? what do you mean you cosplay? You have, you know, like the cover of our magazine this month is Black Panther. Right. He's the Tennessee Highway Patrolman. <laughs> you would yeah. never have guessed. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, what is it, dual identity? Yeah, you have another yeah. identity that people don't know about. Right. So, yeah, we have legit uh, Clark Kent amongst us. Right, right. <laughs> that we don't know their secret identities. <laughs> don't oh, go man. ripping anyone's shirt off. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, it's a good question. Where Where does Superman change now? We have cell phones. <laughs> I would have never thought of that, um, but that is a good question. Yeah, he has to duck in the alley or I run to the so. restroom in the stall yeah. or blah, blah, blah. In, Uber. in air, in mid <laughs> yeah, air. While... Okay. <laughs> oh, that, why have they never done that where just all of a sudden clothes fell out of the sky? It's just because where does he put them? <laughs> <laughs> He's got hidden pockets, I'm yeah, sure. Folks, these are questions that we didn't even know we had. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you've got. Um, all kinds of stuff. So panel super superhero fashion. I don't think I've seen this panel. Well, so that's that's a panel for cosplayers. Okay. Okay. You know, talking about the design and the evolution of the superhero costume. Okay. So uh that is going to be led by Andrea Starnes, who mm-hmm. go, who is Medea Rays in yep. the uh cosplay world. And there's some other cosplayers that are going to be panelists on that. Um yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think that's something else I've realized in in doing this con is that you know a lot of these cosplayers are designers. Right. You know they're they're designing their own costumes. They're figuring out how mm-hmm. to make everything work. And if you're looking at how that has progressed over the years, right. A perfect panel, right? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I think um, our podcast that will be released on the 16th of this month. Uh, is Finelia cosplay, mm-hmm. and she's been uh, she's a seamstress. And I didn't realize that you know, of course, interviewed her because she makes her own cosplays. But then come to find out, you know, here she is, this whole world of making wedding dresses and doing alterations. Mm-hmm. She's a full seamstress, mm-hmm. and um, you know, so there's this whole another uh, layer to everybody. And so uh, it's really neat to me to. Uh, I mean, you feel like you're discovering all this stuff. I, I, and I know personally I'm discovering it, especially in the arts and crafts world. Even. Right, right. You know, I think what Sonia and I have learned, if nothing else, this has been like a culture that we had not been privy to or just uh, it, it, it's its own culture. That's, you know, it really you talk is. about the network and the family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all of those things. Well, somebody brought to uh, to my, I'm going to name drop him, Sean Pitts. I'm sure mm-hmm. you guys know. Right. Yeah brought something to my attention the other day that I never would have thought of. And of course he was looking at the the January copy of the magazine and he said, people don't understand this is folk art. Mm-hmm. And I was like, folk art. He's like, yeah, they're making all this stuff by hand. They're designing all this stuff. And I said, okay, so the context has changed. That's all. It's, it's focused on, he said, still stories, fictional stories, yeah. fictional characters, yeah. heroes, urban legends. And it's folk art. And I was like, wow, I never would have thought of that. But it's just the context is different from what we think of folk art as being specifically generated around, you know, your local. But it is local. It is local. It's sort of focused on 
I guess what I guess what for me I never would have thought of it because you think of like Marvel and DC and these big movies now that get mm-hmm. made. But you're on this level of the Comic Con and everything. We're looking at actual folk art and uh and handmade stuff. So that's exactly right. That's a great way to look at it. I think a lot of people maybe misinterpret what folk art is mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and what that culture, I mean, it's a culture. It's yeah. about the culture. Yeah. It's about what's happening right. here today, right now. Right. And cosplay, comic cons are, you know, we were talking earlier about, we. I feel like that the Haywood Comic Con kind of got into the mix at just the right time because there seems absolutely. to be a boom of cons <laughs> right now. Yeah, absolutely. You guys came in, I think, at just a perfect uh, not just time, but you guys are in a great location. Mm-hmm. Right out here off the interstate, you're right between Jackson and Memphis. I mean, you've got a great ability to pull people from all directions. Um, and that's why I talk about in Selmer, you know, people say, oh, you're in too small an area. You're um, you're in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, no, no, we're halfway to everywhere. Right. And that should be our slogan. Yeah. <laughs> be all of West yeah. Tennessee, right? Really. We're so centrally we're, We really are. Yeah. We're central yeah. to every. We're halfway to everywhere. You know, we had so many people from Arkansas, Mississippi, mm-hmm. Georgia, Kentucky. Kentucky. Illinois, yep. uh, Alabama. We had folks from a little bit of everywhere. Right. You know, yeah. South, Southeast. And so. this year will be bigger. It'll just get bigger every year, mm-hmm. and it'll be more fun every year. Um, and to me, um saying that it's, you know, like a community has sprung up, it's it's more so almost like a family because everybody gets to know each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm talking to people on the phone and stuff now that I just didn't know yeah. six months or a year. Ago. Right. And uh, it's, it's pretty neat. <laughs> it is. And, uh, I think it's good, especially in the age we live in where we're quote unquote connected you know, but we're really not. The connection that comes from us sitting down face to face and talking, that's connection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think the, the Comic Cons, the, to me, the more the merrier because it's just bringing more chances for people to connect, people to go out and see each other, mm-hmm. have fun, and show off what they've done and, and inspire them to make more and keep right. going. Uh, and that was one of the things, uh, you know, we had the event up here. The little girl came from Corinth with mm-hmm. her mom. And uh, they came in the studio last Friday and bought a copy of the the January magazine because that little girl is in it yeah. from Corinth. And so um, just hearing them like what's coming up is, of course, February we put a full schedule mm-hmm. uh, of everybody and stuff. And uh, you know they want to know where everything's at, what's going on. And I thought this would be a great chance for us to to bring all that to everybody and sort of keep everybody in the know because it's it seems to be kind of difficult on social media you guys know you get buried by all the bad news <laughs> right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh it's hard to keep everybody in the know of what what all's going on so you guys uh y'all seem to have a lot of panels going on <laughs> <laughs> we want to we want to keep people busy learning and shopping oh you've brought in the ghost hunting and paranormal Okay. We have, yeah. So that's cool. Um, that discussion is going to be about investigating, paranormal investigating, and sharing some of the true stories of some of the investigations. Um, we also, you know, something that was interesting to me was we're doing, uh, Katie Jones is doing a panel, a panel on anime and the invasion of normalcy. And I had to read that a few times to even start to think about the invasion of normalcy but Mm. it's you know how it started out as something weird that nobody really knew a whole lot about and now you see anime everywhere even in Kroger and Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade oh absolutely well I mean it was a Japanese it's a it's really a Mm -hmm. Japanese thing but when I always think about how Japanese anime is now encroached on and it is influencing American culture to me, it makes sense if you understand how much Japanese love rockabilly, Elvis, and rock and roll. <laughs> right. It's a two-way street. Yes. yes. And yes. so Even we're the really, blues. absolutely, yeah. we're really just trading cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, it, to me, it made sense that, of course, it's going to come over here and, 
and be popular and be introduced into because we're over the mm-hmm. people don't realize that how much they really enjoy American culture. And, we're sharing uh, with each other. Absolutely. We're sharing. It's, a, it's a global <laughs> we're culture. We're sharing. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, what is and, and Mickey this, Mouse said it's a small world, right? It's a small <laughs> world after all. After all. Oh, oh, man. And I, I was looking at the Sunday panel with uh, Sean Howe, and uh, I'm so fortunate to have a large piece of his artwork hanging up in my studio I bought recently. Um, but that impact of AI on professional arts, wow, that's going to be a I'm going to have to close my booth for a minute and go sit in on that. Yeah, panel. you, you um, need to be a panelist on that. That, I think, AI has, uh, I talked to somebody about that the other day, and I, I equivalated to the, the atomic, the discovery of the atomic energy. It was like, it has the ability to power the world, but it also has the ability to destroy it. Mm-hmm. It exactly. depends on whose hands it gets in. Mm-hmm. And I feel like AI has the same power. It can cure a million things, but at the same time, the science proved recently in Sweden, uh, it can generate some of the most deadly. So mm-hmm. it's just yeah. who who gets it first, the good guy or the bad guy. Right. Yeah. So it opens that's up interesting. so much. It really does. And, uh, and the impact on, you know, looking at these artists and, and talking about folk art, you know, that, and he's a painter illustrator and of course myself being in photography ai is going to have direct impact on a good and bad mm-hmm. and uh, and you guys in tourism i would imagine uh and everything that you guys do it's going to have an impact on or probably has already had an impact it is already having an impact you know the you you just have to remember that it's there and you have to do your research and make sure because because AI is pulling from the World Wide Web. Right. You know, the truth and the non-truth. And oh, the absolutely. Fic- fictional stories, yeah. you know, all that. So you have to still do your due diligence to make sure what it's giving you is Actually, the truth. It's right. factual. Yeah. yeah. In the photography world, but I someone asked me what I thought about it. And I said, well, I said, here's the way I look at it. Um, I remember when everybody in the film world was like, oh, I never go to digital photography not going to last. I'm like, technology never goes backwards. It doesn't go back in the box. I said, so AI is here. It's not going anywhere. Um, I see it as a tool, and I don't mind it as long as I can dictate to it what I want it to do, mm-hmm. not it dictate my creativity to me. That's yeah. where I draw the line. I don't want it to go, hey, shouldn't you have framed this better than this? Like, no. I have purpose behind what I do right. and sure it's going to have imperfections and um, you know but as long as know. as yeah. long as you are keeping control of your right. own creativity yeah it's just it's a tool, it's a tool. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's right. why I'm like and I'm I'm going to learn how to use the tool because uh, it would be like I said told somebody the other day it's like if you owned a mechanic shop and you just had uh, metric tools and then somebody came in with a car that had USA, you know, measurements on it. You're like, oh, not using this. Staying with the metric system, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Why wouldn't you get the other tools to help you do the job? Um, we'll all be using yeah. those tools. Trust yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we'll, really, we've been using them. Autocorrect yeah. is an algorithm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. really, and we see how great it's that not works. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's not perfect. Uh, yeah, free, 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 free. yeah, that's that's one of the big things uh, is, is proofreading and really checking out. Count your if you use it in photography, count your uh, person's fingers. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. but in the the cosplay world and what you guys have got going on, y'all have um, more. I know y'all are having the cosplay competition, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, okay, somebody's going to be doing a live podcast at the. The convention on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, wow. Tad and Tony's movie reviews. Um, they were with us last year and did one, so they wanted to come back and do each day this okay. year. Uh, Tony Reed, who is an author, Soldiers of Light and Darkness mm-hmm. is his uh, fictional series, and he is also going to serve as our MC this year again. Awesome. 
and we got the awards that mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon for the cosplay competition. We have something really cool for kids. You know, we want to we want to be all inclusive and we want to include all ages. Right. And so it's important to us being a family friendly con that there's uh things that involve the children directly. Mm -hmm. And Ashana has done a great job of finding a program for that this year. <laughs> Magic Mr. Nick is bringing his dinosaur troop with him. Oh, okay. So um, he's going to do a wonderful puppet show with these life-size dinosaurs. Um, wow. So that's going to be interesting. That's going that's to be, be cool. interesting. Well, you know, that's the latest crazy. Adults are going to like this. Yeah. Right. You know, the, the, the dinosaur thing has really blown up right. you know, recently. Right. It, it's become quite favorable in households with, with children. So. We're hoping the kids will come out and enjoy. I feel like dinosaurs have always this will always be a thing. Oh yeah. Like it's just you know, there's something fascinating about things that were massive that roamed around and uh you know, millions of years ago. I think mm -hmm. it's it's kinda like uh when I was a kid, everybody wanted to be an astronaut, you know, and everybody mm -hmm. was fascinated with dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And then when now with the technology, you know, going back to technology again in the movies. They yeah. can make things so realistic yeah. you know, with all these dinosaurs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That it just, to me, there's just another level of sparking imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And something we realized we were lacking last year that we're bringing this year, a uh, Hall of Heroes, which is a gaming um, okay. store over in Ripley, yeah. is bringing an actual game room this year. So we'll have a room where you can go in and demonstrate the games mm -hmm. and get a feel for what they're like. Um, you know, I hear about these games, Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and all oh, yeah. this. You know, I've never played that. I have no idea how it works, oh, no. what it works. <laughs> so, fun. so, you know, just to be able to go into a room, if I'm someone who's not familiar with it, or right. you're, you're coming to our con and you don't realize what it all is, you can walk into these rooms and observe or participate. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, that's going to be a big thing. That that was kind of my introduction into this world, too. For a short time, of course, we had the game store there in Selmer. We did Magic and Dungeons and Dragons. It's all trading card, old school board games. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what people don't realize is how good that is for the kids to get them away from the screens and get them thinking critically. Because suddenly they're doing math. They're doing word problems. I think somebody uh, came into our store one day and asked my youngest son. They're like, what is Dungeons and Dragons? And he said, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's word problems <laughs> in math, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you use your imagination or something like that. And I was like, oh, that's that's an interesting way to think yeah, about that yeah. because kids have to add up numbers. And and I'll never forget this one lady came in and she was a teacher and she's like, my son was here for like four hours the other day. What was he doing? And I asked his name and she told me, I was like, oh, I was like, he read this book because he wants to learn how to play, play this game. And she just looks at it. She's like, you're telling me that my son read a book yesterday. <laughs> he didn't believe me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, he had to sit here and read for like four hours because this game is very complicated. Right. He wants to develop a character for it. So they have to go through all these steps and then they'll roll these dice and add all these numbers. And she just was in complete disbelief that her child sat down and read anything. And, um, you know, it was a big, a big thing for me is seeing these kids grow up and I know most of them now have all got jobs. They're all doing well. Some of them have families and uh, I miss that, you know, COVID took that away, mm -hmm. but the comic cons now have brought a lot of that family back yeah. for me personally. Yeah. And, that's, and I love that. And, and it's, it's such just, a safe place for people is. to gather that's, with uh, yep. their creativity and, and their love for the culture. It, it becomes know. a third space for yeah. them. Yeah. That's a safe space, exactly yeah. what you said. And mm -hmm. that's the cons suddenly becomes this safe space once a year. It's like a family reunion. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, that's right. Uh, yeah. You're right about that because we've, we've seen them be so supportive of each other. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, everybody's visiting each other. They're giving hugs mm -hmm. and, right. oh, so glad to see you. So, yeah, yeah that whole sense of family and community uh, is expressed greatly at Gone. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I think is is one of the most important. Where I know that um, I went to a small convention recently. It was the last one they're doing of this particular one in Memphis, and uh, there wasn't much to do because it was just a one day small um, 
convention, but what there was was just clusters of everyone that hasn't seen each other since the last convention in a couple of few months. And I just noticed they would stay in these clusters and they're just talking. They're, they brought food with them from whatever fast food place and they're hanging out and it's like they're at camp. They haven't seen each other in forever and they're all catching up. And it's so completely different from, of course, they're going to see each other on TikTok or they're going to sure. see each other on Facebook or they're going to message each other, text each other. But watching them all interact in person and getting that connection back, um, I think it's and it makes the conventions very important on a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and like you said, having a family friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want to engage everyone. That's we right. want, you know, it's a judgment free zone, Absolutely. right? Lots are judgment free zone. Absolutely. Zones, and we want everyone, regardless of age, to yeah. check it out, be a part mm-hmm. of it. I mean, yeah. if you don't do anything but come and just walk through just to see what's happening, right? It's it's worth it. It, I think conventions are for not just for kids, but those or anybody that was ever once a kid. That's right. Like the spirit of a kid. Out. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Kid. Yeah. I tell kids all the time, don't grow up. It's yeah. trap. Like, I think that's like, one of the things that, that's probably one of the things that made me a little more assured about what we were doing. And it's because we just saw so much diversity. In Absolutely. All of that, you know, yep. um, and, and we're no young chicks. Definitely not. And when it was appealing to us, we thought, we need to bring this. I felt that I mentioned my wife the other day and um, I said, you know, the one thing that bothers me is I wish I didn't find, I wish I would have found this 30 years ago. Yeah. Oh, there's no telling. I mean, (laughs) I just, you know, I feel like now finding this, I'm 50 Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, I feel like I almost found this too late. I mean, because it's so fun. There's so much involved. And, you know, and there's so much more that I personally want to do. And uh, I was like, man. Yeah, I think bringing it to Brownsville has certainly sparked an interest in community. We're, we're hearing a little buzz these days. That's so awesome. I, yeah, I think we've introduced uh, this culture to our community. We, and they have embraced it. We brought it. it to the service. It was here. Yeah. It, it just, you just it didn't have a place. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And that's, that's right. what I feel you that's guys right. have given it a place. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And mm-hmm. um, so yeah, no, it was here, mm-hmm. and that's and that's what you start realizing too. You're like, oh wow, this is this was all under the surface, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. it's been here all this time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I, and that's why I'm so excited for like the Haywood Comic Cons. One of my favorites because people and people say, well, you know, you want to do one of the big, you want to do one of the. I'm like, you know what? That from a business standpoint, that would be awesome to do one of these big giant ones. But I love these because I get to talk to people. Mm-hmm. I get to hang out. We have fun. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I really don't want to lose that. Yeah. You build the, relationships. You know, too absolutely. With yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just to give you an idea, when I met Santiago here at Haywood Con and I took his photo, you know, and printed mm-hmm. him out some because he ran out of it. Well, the next thing you know, I'm doing his convention in Paraguay mm-hmm. last year, and now we're doing it again this yeah. year. And now he's a buddy of mine that, <laughs> that I can message yeah. at any time, like, hey, yeah. what's going on? And that's because of Haywood Con. And so, I mean, that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, if we would have went to some gigantic one in Atlanta, there's no way anybody has time to talk to anybody. Like, what are you going to do? You're and those are nice cons as well. Absolutely. But, they are. Um, and I don't get me wrong. I'd right. love to go to Dragon Con. One time. <laughs> I would love to go see Dragon yeah. Con one time. Yeah. Yeah. But I know me. Yeah, so. And I know Thank that after a day or two of that, I'm going to be wrecked. Yeah. And yeah. and exhausted. Mm-hmm. And so. Well, the smaller cons yeah. certainly have their advantages. They do. Advantages, they really do. Yeah. And they give you a real chance to build mm-hmm. and and. Fortify the existing community. Absolutely, that's what I feel. That's it's a good way to put it. So key for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, guys, I want to thank y'all for trying the first mobile podcast. <laughs> for those of y'all that are listening, we're actually in Brownsville. I'm here at the uh, West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center, uh, and they have the Tina Turner Museum here in Brownsville. So, uh, for those of y'all that didn't know, the late great Miss Tina Turner was from right here in uh, 
Brownsville, Tennessee. Right. Was a, Nut Bush. Nut Bush, yeah, yeah right down Nut the road. Bush. That's it. It's so, a uh, farming community. You know, uh, this is funny, but after uh, I was here recently, I actually went home and was home alone. And it's like, I'm going to watch a movie no one will watch with me. And so I watched Beyond Thunderdome because I'd oh, never yeah. seen it. Oh, and I'd yeah. seen her yeah. garments yeah. hanging yeah. here yeah. and seen her outfits hanging yeah. here and had, before I saw the movie. And so I actually sat down and watched Beyond mm-hmm. Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, uh, this Tina Turner was something yeah. else. I mean, yeah. not only could she do, go on stage and do whatever and just blow the speakers out, mm-hmm. but she could uh, she could act. She yeah, could act. she could do yeah, everything. Yeah, could, yeah. And uh, so, and then when I think about that, I'm thinking, where was she? Mm-hmm. Nutbush, Tennessee. That's it. And, uh, you know, I think that's awesome. To, to show young people that go, hey, dream big because uh, the world's just, just down the road. That's it. It's waiting for you, waiting <laughs> yeah, for you, absolutely. waiting for you. Well, thank you all so much for joining me here today. And I'm looking forward to Haywood Con. And I'm going to get this podcast out there as a bonus episode. So all you guys out there listening, this is uh, one of our first of many, hopefully, bonus episodes.